Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform, please reach out to me for pricing at tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing a 600-piece limited edition from 2007, the America's Cup-themed Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Alinky Team Chronograph. Uh, there were three different versions. This version, perhaps the warmest, featuring carbon fiber, rose gold, and rubber. Now, the timepiece is exceptional in that it uses a unique dial, movement, and case. These components on the Alinky Team Chronograph are shared with no other Royal Oak Offshore, so this is far more than a branding exercise. Taking a quick look at the size of the case, it's 44 millimeters rated, though it wears larger. It's 14.4 millimeters thick, and from lug tip to lug tip, it is 55.5 millimeters across the wrist. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see that you really want a wrist at least the size of mine. This is a big watch, and it wears that way. I would recommend a big wrist, and certainly a taste for extroverted accents and accessories, because as large it is, being Audemars Piguet and rose gold, you're not going to miss it. This is a timepiece that stands out like a Lamborghini Aventador. Now, the timepiece has a wonderful weight to it. If you believe a luxury watch should feel expensive, quote-unquote, this is that. Now, the timepiece features a strap junction that is a little bit non-standard. Normally on a Royal Oak Offshore, this is where you see the little intermediate plot links that join the strap to the case. Uh, here we have the same sturdy screw and bar system for holding the strap to the case, but we don't have the plots. Instead, there's a little bit of a junction between the strap and the case, and there's some countersink where the strap actually fills the hollows in the case left by the plots. It's a nicely made strap. As you can see, it has these ridges that rise out of those two channels. So even the strap for this model is unique to the model. We have a buckle that is large, and rose gold, and you can see that it features little bolts outboard that help to fix it to the strap. And you can see the outer face of the buckle is polished. The remainder is of satin finish. Taking a quick look at the underside of the strap, you can see it's designed for the Royal Oak Offshore, and it is a brand new Audemars Piguet factory strap. Now, the case is enormous. From the 9 o'clock side, it looks like a conventional 44 millimeter Royal Oak Offshore. We have that lovely expanding bevel over the edges of the lugs. Lug hoods are satinated. The case band is satinated. The lines of the faceted bezel continue through the case back and the case midsection. And, of course, the bezel is a combination of cured carbon fiber, and uh, you can actually see that there's a gasket that links into it, that the two pieces link together. There is a sort of socket-like design that allows those two pieces to appear seamless as they sit atop the case. But now, as we move over to the crown side, you can see that this is a custom-made case just for this model. We have these enormous shear guards for the crowns that operate the chronograph as well as the central crown. The central crown is huge, polished on its outer face, and satinated on its side. It's a screw-down crown. This is a 100-meter water-resistant watch. The chronograph pushers are polished on their outer face. Then you can see they have a little step to them, and they're satinated on their sides. All this is hand finish. Both the micro-beveling of the shear guards and the alternating polish and satin of the pushers, that is all done by hand. The crown here is huge, even by Royal Oak Offshore standards. Now, the dial features hexagonal bolts inside a rounded octagonal bezel. That octagonal bezel goes back to the original Gerald Gent designed 1972 Royal Oak when it was based on a vintage diving helmet design. We have a hexagonal pattern for these bolts, and you'll note that is also the shape of the crown. On a Royal Oak offshore, those bolts are made of stainless steel. The timepiece has a unique dial that features a concentric pattern outboard under the hours. But then we have applique rose gold Arabic numerals and Audemars Piguet logo. We have two sub-registers for chronograph functions, and then we have uh, running seconds at center for the chronograph and a regatta timer function. We'll do a quick loom shot here. You can see the hour and minute hands are currently superimposed, but you can see that they are loomed. Now, about that regatta timer, it counts 10 minutes, and it changes color as it does. Its purpose is to count down to the start of a match, which is one race within a regatta, or a series of sailboat races. So this counts down to the start of the match, and you can rapidly reset it, because this is also a 
flyback chronograph. Now let me just move those hands out of the way over at 10 o'clock, and you can see that the watch does include a, a secondary minute register. And this watch can be used as a conventional chronograph. Uh, the flyback functionality makes it handy for timing any events that occur in rapid succession. And you can see the little symbol of Team Alinghi, which was the America's Cup team that Audemars Piguet was sponsoring at the time. Now, when you turn it over, you can see even more nautical imagery. You can see this is an F-Series watch, number 192 of 600. And you can see the Audemars Piguet-sponsored America's Cup yacht, complete with the professional sailors, their gear, and the boat's wheel. It's a very good-looking case back. Underneath sits a JLC-based movement that is unique to this model. It is the 2326-2848. So it is a JLC 889 automatic base with a Dubois de Praz flyback chronograph module on top. You'll note there is no date on this dial, so that is not one of its functions. It has automatic winding with unidirectional winding action, a 38 hour power reserve, a 4 hertz beat rate, it pivots on 50 joules. It features that flyback functionality. It uses a vertical clutch to engage its chronograph. It features a free sprung balance for better durability and easier adjustment. And though it does not feature a date and therefore it does not feature a, a quick set for the date, it does feature a hacking or stop seconds function. That is one refinement it has. And once again, this is a movement specific to the model. So the dial, the case and the movement, heck, even the strap, are specific to the model. That is bespoke watchmaking. Reach out to T. Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.